Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Louis, and uh, as I'm sure you all know, I am raising money to do a, a campaign with uh, Living Paintings about Doctor Who. And um, I have the great pleasure of saying that today I'm joined by one of my favourite doctors, Mr. Tom Baker. How are you? Oh, I'm radiant. Radiant, yes. <laughs> That's good. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we oh, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you don't mind, I've got, a, I've got a couple of questions for you, just a few questions. Mm. Um, so obviously you were you were the doctor for a long time, seven years, which I um I believe is still the longest that a doctor served, if my memory is correct. Um, over that whole time, was there anything that you particularly enjoyed, or something that you would like to uh, to redo if you had the opportunity? Uh, no, I, I I had a happy time most of the time because they accepted what I I had to offer, you know, because. Uh, as you know, it's not really an acting part. It's uh, they choose a doctor and he plays it in his own style. So, I mean, I wasn't acting when I was in Doctor Who. I was just saying Doctor Who lines, uh, but it was just Tom. I mean, in a sense, you know, I mean, I am Doctor Who because I mean, I talk that nonsense all the time. I like to <laughs> amuse people. I'm a fantasist. Um, uh, like the next braggart. Um, so it was all very friendly, you know, and playing a benevolent alien was very, very e easy. No one has ever failed as Doctor Who because he is, what I just said, uh, a benevolent alien uh, and very hard, impossible to dislike, I think. Okay, that's interesting you say that. And uh, the other question that I had for you um, is obviously you're now doing uh, audio adventures with Big Finish, um, mm. quite a while, quite a while after, obviously you were the Doctor. Um, what was that like for you? Um, doing doing these audios, um, I guess during lockdown, as well, it would have been quite different. But what would it what was it like recording these audios, and what was it like getting back into character uh, for these after so long? Well, as I've hinted rather broadly just now, you know, there's no question of going getting back into character. I mean, I just, you know read out the lines as well as as well as I could to be the same character, to be the doctor. People don't want heroes to change. Um, and uh, heroes don't want to change either, I don't think. Anyway, this hero didn't want to change because it was there was nothing to change to. I the characteristics of that character I played were really characteristics of me, really, you know, friendly rather dotty person, um, a bit pretentious and everything like that, but meaning well and quite amusing and um, and not at all mean-spirited. Uh, so there you are, I've just described myself. <laughs> so you found it quite easy then, obviously? To oh, from... terribly easy, yes. It's terribly easy when you've got all lines uh, and not only that, you've got a pretty girl looking at you all the time and <laughs> nodding. You know, there's nothing real about that, but um, it was... Yeah, it was just a pleasure, and um, and no effort. I slipped from the visual into the audio, and um, and uh, and you know, I they all the people who direct me in the audio, they all know about me, and uh, we get on like a house on fire. And uh, so I just slip in. My wife supervises my the sound recording here from home and uh, away we go and have a good time uh, every couple of weeks we have a a few hours with me being a hero again nice well that, that that's really good thank you thank you for answering them um would you mind if i told you a little bit about this uh, this campaign that i'm that i'm working on yes go on tell uh, me sorry you go i spoke over you sorry i mean are you you're going to tell me about it? Yeah, in fact, if, if you don't mind. No, no, I'd like that. Go ahead. So basically what it is, is I'm, I'm completely blind myself. And this is um, the blind and partially sighted uh, children and adults, you know, because Doctor Who appeals to everybody. And the uh, Living Paintings produce these books, which are raised plastic images of characters. And there weren't any for Doctor Who. And I thought, Doctor Who's such a family show always has been about families gathering around and watching it together and the living paintings are all about uniting families as well so i thought well i'll contact them about maybe doing a doctor who based pack and they said yes and 
we set up a crowdfunder to raise the money, you know, to make this happen. And it's it's all gone a bit mad. <laughs> We've had a lot of support from people like yourself. Um, and it's all just kind of snowballed from there. And I hope that the pictures, which also have like an audio description track that goes along with them. So they describe the picture to you, you know, all the colours, what clothes the doctor's wearing, etc. They describe them to you. And um, from this audio description, whoever's reading it, um, and they describe what it's like. And it just helps you as a blind person to build up a mental image of what it looked like. Because obviously for someone like myself, I can't see any of it. So I have no idea what <laughs> what a lot of these characters look like. Well, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's kind of tall and, uh, and got rather nervous, large eyes. He nods a lot and has big teeth, uh, which are ah. his own, I understand. I, I check my wife and <laughs> think they are mine. And, uh, and he's very friendly and heroic and, uh, and whimsical as a, and is kind, yes, um, and often silly. So in other words, he's very, very human. So because he's so very, very human, I should have failed, shouldn't I? Because the doctor, in fact, <laughs> is an alien and comes from somewhere else. But I mean, I don't know anything about being an alien or anything, but I know about being Tom Baker. And so I offered <laughs> Tom Baker and uh, they said, that'll do us really. And some of them said, my God, he's so alien. When of course, I, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I thought I'd better be born <laughs> and remain and uh, irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you definitely united a lot of generations of uh, Doctor Who. My parents grew up in the 70s and they remember you uh, very vividly. Um, so obviously through them, I I know about your Doctor and that kind of thing. And I know about the long scarf, the very long scarf. My dad tried to explain how long the scarf was because <laughs> I couldn't get my head around that. But yeah. Well, the, all those things that... Uh... I rather exaggerated, you know, because they were they were offered to me, and uh, the scarf certainly I made as much as uh, of a fuss as I could about it, and tripped over it a lot, and um, and and it got funnier and funnier, and the fans liked it, and they started making long scarves, and sometimes I went to uh, fan meetings or whatever you call them, you know, Doctor Who Appreciation Society. And in the, in the winter, it was quite funny to see 700 people in long scarves <laughs> uh, and quite a lot of them stumbling all over the place, but all laughing good naturedly. Because, you know, the thing is, it's, um, it's basically a kind of charming and uh, simple and generous, but rather preposterous sort of story, isn't it? The idea of someone who can travel through time and space uh, and someone who constantly gets it wrong and, and yes, somehow remains the, um, the the hero and nearly always wins because of either the the um, the villains were idiots or I outsmart them. And I always have all the best lines and actors love having the best lines. And uh, often I overstress them, I'm afraid, but there you are, it's all in the past now. And I'm <laughs> sorry if... Uh, I overdid it, but I was doing the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did, you know, a lot of people, including myself, probably enjoyed it. Uh, you mentioned the scarf. One last question then. Did that happen a lot? Did you trip over the scarf? Because it never oh, seemed to course, happen on TV. Yeah, of course I tripped over it because it was ridiculously <laughs> long. Um, it was a very, very bad idea, but it was funny. It was preposterous. Again, you know, uh, I used to trade and if people used to say, well, it, it's silly or you're silly. I say, listen, you understand, I don't come from this world. I come from, you know, Gallifrey and the constellation of Casterbrus, you know, where we do things differently there, where it's considered terribly smart to trip over your scarf. Um, and so there was always a glib ripos from me to justify why I was behaving so outrageously or often being so silly, but all the time trying to be generous and. Uh, on the side of good, you know, trying to be a, a goodie, a goodie, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for talking to me. Well, that's uh, that's a great pleasure. It's, uh, I'm sorry it was so short because I could go on talking about myself for a <laughs> long, long time, you know, given the opportunity. But most people will do what you've just done and uh, cut me off short. So <laughs> goodbye, and I hope it helps. Goodbye. Thank you, well, it does. It does, thank you.